Hi, in today's video I want to demonstrate how you can create an interaction between rigid bodies and character bodies uh, where you, for example, if in a game you need to push a box and later on have your player to step on it to get to a higher platform or for whatever reason. This video is based on the feedback of my last video where I showed a little bit of rigid bodies configurations. So uh, right now I'm going to just show you uh, two ways to interact with rigid bodies when you don't need coding at all, uh, the other one you need a uh, coding effort. This red cube is created with a no-code approach, so I configured it only by setting flags on the spectre. As you can see, I can push it, I can interact with it, but it has some flaws. Uh, for example, I cannot step on it if I want. You see that the cube kind of flickers and don't let me to do that. If I push it against a wall, uh, it just flickers and kind of teleports to another place. It it's behaves really weirdly. And here we have this black cube. This black cube have a more complex and code required approach. Uh, I can push it as normal as well. As you can see, I can keep pushing it. It behaves slightly differently. It's physics. Uh, I can step on it. So now I step on it. And if I push it against a wall, it just don't let me push it. If you want to know how you can implement the red box physics, this one that you can push it, but you cannot step above it, you cannot push it against the walls or else you're going to have a weird behavior. You can see how you can achieve that in my other video. I'm going to leave the link on the description below. Now, if you want to implement the black box collision, this one that you can step over it and you cannot push it against walls, uh, I'm going to just demonstrate it. So we are doing all this pushing around of this box inside of the code. So pretty much all the uh, configuration that they have on this rigid body is just the default configuration. When you create one, it will come with all these flags set up. The only change I've made is the collision layer, but this is not required. You could have it at one, that would be still fine. I only changing this because of organization. We're gonna use it later on on the code. Right, so let's go see this code. Actually, the code don't lives inside of the black box. As you can see, the script here is empty. Uh, it, this script doesn't live inside of the region body. This lives inside of the character body 3D. That's because we need some player information when we gonna calculate this push that we're doing in the box. We need the player direction, we need the player collisions, and we also need to know if the player is on floor. So the code that I have here is only the template that we have for the character body 3D. When you create a new script that inherits from character body 3D, you're gonna get this whole script here that just is a basic implementation for movement and jump. What I had added was only these lines here. As you can see, I started with is on floor. Uh, this is on floor, it's because there are some weird behaviors if the player is in the corner of a box and it drops while its um, sides are touching the box but it's not still in the floor, it pushes it a little bit so I'm just making sure that uh, I'm avoiding uh, weird behaviors. You can improve this on your own, you just need to think what your game needs. And so here in the second line I have a for that goes through the get slide collision count. Uh, this is getting all the collisions that this character body 3D is having, so all the objects that it's touching. And then later on I go and I call my check for collision function that I myself created. Uh, this one receives a get slide collision uh, as argument. This is returning me a kinematic uh, collision 3D object and the, you need to pass an index of what's the index of this collision. Since you are touching a lot of different objects, you need to know which one you want to check for collision. So pretty much uh, in this function, we're checking for all the collisions that this character body 3D is having. So I'm calling this function on all these collisions. Uh, the first thing I do is to get the collider of this uh, kinematic collision 3D. And then I check if the object from this collision have the collision layer equals true, as I set in the movable box there. That's a performance improvement, so I don't need to check all the layers, I don't need to check all the collisions, I can just say, if there's object is in the layer true, it means that uh, the player can interact with, so I'm gonna check for that. And the only thing I do is, I get the player direction where the player is facing to, and then I apply a, a impulse. So I get the object and let the object apply an impulse on itself, and then here is just uh, the push direction, I did it times one that is relevant, but it's just demonstrated that you can have here uh, stronger values depending on the object you have. So you can have here a hundred and then uh, this cube here will just go really far away, you know, 
so you can do whatever you want here and pretty much that's it uh, i'm gonna leave uh, these lines here in the description like i said the rest of this code is just a uh, template code that godot have inside of itself you just create a new script and then you have it yeah that's all for today thank you